Uh, thank you, Mr. Arindam Shom, uh, but don't go away. I request Mr. Gautam Banerjee to hand over a memento to him. Please step on the dais kindly. With that, we go over to the next speaker. Modern Day Trends in Analytics. Panchali Roy Chaudhary, Director of Analytics, TCG Digital, will be presenting a presentation for you. Before she comes here on the dais, let me just uh, take a moment to introduce her to you. Panchali Roy Chaudhary is Director of Analytics and Consulting with TCG Digital. She has over 12 years of industry experience in business analytics, project management and software development. She has experience in all facets of an analytics discovery project, starting from requirements gathering, team building, statistical modeling, interpretation and presentation of results, solutions, solution interpretation and end user training. She did her MBA from IIM Kolkata and engineering in computer science from Bits Pilani. I welcome Ms. Panchani Rajchaudhuri onto the dais, please. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, NASCOM and Data Science Foundation, A, for setting up this event, and B, for giving me an opportunity to speak out here. Thank you. So I'm going to be talking about uh, modern day trends in business analytics. So we have indeed come a long way today from the times that you know uh, those very high maintenance, high cost systems used to turn out essentially very esoteric reports which were comprehensible to a select few in the organization. Today, we have uh, very colorful dashboards, user friendly uh, and can do descriptive, predictive analytics and can give you a lot of insights. That's where we've come today. So it was interesting that during the break, uh, I was asked a question. So some of the analytics that we are doing, we have talked about it, we have been talking about it for many, many years in the past. So customer analytics, there's nothing new about it. We've been doing it for many, many years. So what essentially is changing? Uh, why this talk about modern day uh, technology, modern day BI? So what is the underlying driver for change? So I'm going to be talking about four things today that are going, driving this change and how we deal with it. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is data. So analytics, as we know, is all based on data, right? So that's your driver for analytics. Without data, you're not going to have analytics. So what's changing today is the world's stock of data. So in the past, if I step back and rewind back to the 90s, it was primarily analog data and the focus on digital was less. Fast forward to today, that has changed. Most of the data that we see today, it's a, there's a lot of digital data and what's interesting is 50% of that is connected via the internet, which means it has an IP address, which means effectively you can get all that data, connect everything together, analyze everything together, and drive knowledge, deliver, you know, understand patterns, discover, pattern discovery. That is an entirely new thing. So we have to have technology that can deal with such large data volumes, that can deal with this data explosion. Fast forwarding into the future, uh, it's going to be an exponential growth. IDC has a figure of 44 zettabytes of data coming up in by 2020. So that is the future, data explosion. So we need to have technology that can help us deal with such data volumes. And you factor in the response time. So now, uh, back in 2012, Google used to receive uh, 2 million search queries uh, per minute. Fast forward that to today, and that number has more than doubled. So consumers are becoming more and more used to Google speed. So we all want to you know, type in something and get immediate response. And you, you have data explosion on one hand, and on the other side is the user's expectation of very fast information discovery. 
So that is fueling the need for technology that can drive this. So before I move on, I would like to give an example out here. So we spoke about this large data volume. So what can it essentially tell us? I'll give you an example uh, you know, from the domain of uh, drug discovery or in, the, in healthcare. So nowadays when we go to a doctor, what happens? So the doctor has some idea of medicine and tells us, okay, so this is your condition and based on the best practices of what I know happens during if a, for, to a person who is in this condition, this is the medicine. But with the DNA mapping, with genomic mapping, that is completely going to change the way the doctors are going to treat you. So he's going to now in future start with your genomic map. And that is going to bring in this whole new realm of personalized medicine. So the medicine that he's going to be prescribing you will be for your specific genome type, your specific DNA, and that is going to be working best for you. That is what the analytical, that is the analytical capability of the future. Uh, now moving on, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the second thing that I'm going to actually talk about is this whole paradigm of fusion analytics. So organizations have uh, had data for a very long time, right, and they've been analyzing that data. Most of the data that people have been analyzing uh, were more or less structured in nature, and they were dri driving value from that particular data set. If they did have, they did have unstructured data in the organization itself. We didn't even have to go to social media, but people were not really analyzing those unstructured data fields. They, at the most, they would keep it as a text column or a comments column somewhere, which people might or you know, they, people may or may not read that column. But now organizations are focusing on getting that unstructured piece into the analysis and adding that entire social media. And this is driving deeper analytical insights. This is deep analytics, the fusion of all the three. Uh, I would like to take an example here. So social media has been a buzzword for many, many years. You know, people talk about posts on Twitter and what companies can do, sentiment analysis, etc. But how many companies are actually uh, using it the right way? I'll give you a very simple example. So this friend of mine, uh, she works with uh, McKinsey and she went to LA and she checked into Beverly Welshire's hotel. And what blew, and the, the story she told me, what blew her mind is she steps in and then the doorman takes her uh, suitcase and says, uh, good morning, Mrs. Anderson, and welcome to Beverly Wilshire's. So she was really surprised because she didn't remember going there before. So she actually went to the receptionist and is like, uh, you know, how, how do you know me? How, how, so I, I haven't been here before. So the receptionist goes into her database and says, no, back in 1997, you were here with a group of 12 people. Uh, do you still prefer a non-smoking room? Uh, do you still like our pasta? Now she was like, really, really, you know, it was like, yes, I do remember coming here now. So she was like, she had forgotten, but the, the hotel from its corporate database kind of remembered that. So that blew her mind. So then uh, this receptionist told her, you look, you look so happy, I'm going to actually give you a room upgrade. So that made my friend even more happy. She goes back into her newly upgraded room and she tweets. Now she's not really a big uh, activist on uh, Twitter, but she's so happy she actually tweets saying that this is super service. And within 15 minutes, the general manager of the hotel actually tweets back and thanks her for her response. So that actually completes the loop. That, that actually told her that people are seeing it, that tweets are not disappearing somewhere in the internet. People are actually taking action on that. So imagine how happy that made her. But me, unfortunately, I'm not that lucky. I go to Mumbai every week, check in on Monday, check out on Friday, same hotel, and every Monday the hotel asks me, good morning, Mrs. Roy Chaudhary, have you stayed with us before? So. So that is the difference. So that is the power of social media and the data. And you know, you, the data is out there. You may choose to use it, you may choose not to use it. And the companies which use this fusion analytics, that is use their own database and the social media and response in an agile fashion, they will be the winners of the future. 
so, okay, I, I spoke about the, the underlying trend. So what is the technology that, that can help you get there? So what is the technology that can uh, you know, help you deal with such large data volumes and also you know, drive fast response time? I, I'm going to just talk about a few of those. See, these were some of the challenges. We are uh, like one of our offerings as a company, we are also developing a product. And I'm sure these are the questions that all product, new age product companies are also striving to answer. So some of these. Uh, you know, so the power of distributed computing is extremely important. So now there's this whole concept of schema-free approach, the NoSQLs. The responsive and reactive architecture is paving way for architectures and uh, softwares which are powered by artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, AI research is what's going to help you uh, effectively visualize information quickly from large data sources. And then there's this whole new realm of in-database analytics. So you do have a large volume of data. You want to do market mix modeling. You want to do so many other computations. But how would you do it? You, so there was this uh, project which we did once for a European uh, retailer. And they wanted to uh, you know, have some knowledge about what perishable stuff to put on the shelf and based on the weather conditions. Now the weather conditions are going to change. So if you take one day to churn out the response, the weather condition is going to change by that one day. So you need to have fast response. So in database analytics uh, is a new thing that's coming up, which means you do the analytics in the database. You don't take the data out of the database. And the computations happen in the kernel of the database, which drives tremendous response times. So these are some of the latest technologies that are upcoming. Then the third thing that I'm going to talk about is mobile analytics. So, so we have now spoken about large data volumes. We have spoken about technology. What about the dissemination of information? So workers today are spending less and less time at their desk. We are always moving. But that doesn't mean our need for information has decreased. In fact, it's grown even more. We need information at our fingertips. And any new age product or new age technology needs to support mobile dissemination. I put out a survey result uh, for you to see. So most companies, uh, this is a survey conducted by the Aberdeen Group. So most companies responded saying that the mobile analytics was imperative to drive business process efficiency. And finally, the last point. Uh, in the inaugural speech, uh, there was this uh, reference made to uh, the success of humankind was the setting up of cities. And the cities were set up in a collaborative fashion. And that is, no, no other group has done uh, you know, anything collaborative, right? The animals don't do anything collaborative. So taking that forward, if what mobile, uh, so sorry, uh, so the analytics and business intelligence solutions and products also need to be collaborative. So imagine now when you go into a boardroom, you have some data scientist somewhere who's prepared some figures which are there on the screen for you to see. So that, and you take out, take down action items on what to do based on that data. But that's not going to be the future. The future is going to be conversations with the data. So, you know, fast forward to the future. You're going to be in a boardroom where you sit and you collaboratively decide what's going to happen, what should be there, what, what analysis is to be done. That is the power of collaboration. And that decision making is going to drive your corporate strategy. So that power of collaborative BI is where the future would be. And one of the classic poster child examples of the power of collaboration is this whole concept of uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. You know, this was ages back, and Britannica was these leather-bound books which were quite expensive, and you know, all of us were told we had to have this entire set, and that was where we would go if we needed to look up information. Of course, Britannica, uh, now I don't know, I don't think too many people today have Britannica. That, that business model doesn't exist anymore. So, you know, what replaced the Britannica? All of us know, of course, it's the Wikipedia. So what's interesting about the Wikipedia is not its distribution, it's how it was built. It was built by individuals across the world contributing autonomously with their knowledge and also in a collaborative fashion. That was the birth of Wikipedia. 
And that was the, also what made Wikipedia successful. That is the part of collaboration. And today, if you want to be successful, you need a product or a solution that enables collaboration and drives your corporate strategy. So I, I guess that's all that I had to say. So to summarize, we need technology that supports fast response on big data, which can weave together structured and unstructured data components together, which can be accessible anytime, anywhere, and which enables self-service and fosters a culture of collaboration. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Cities generally do not actually, uh, they outlast even nations, like Banada Sea and other nations also. Is it possible to use data analytics to actually structure companies and organizations in, in the form of cities? A few other companies, I believe, like Zappos is trying holocracy, which is something like that. But is it possible to do it in India as well? Uh, I'm not sure I understood. So you're saying, is it possible to do it in India? So, so my first answer to you would be, if it's possible to do it globally, it is possible to do it in India. No, is it possible to do it in India using data uh, analytics and data science to actually structure the organizations of companies in working like a city? Yeah, absolutely. See, that is the whole uh, concept of collaboration. See, the days, uh, see, what I meant by collaboration is, so those days where there were a select few, who understood data science. See, mathematical models are important, but mathematical models are important only when you put in the business context to it, right? So that is what drives collaboration. So in order for Indian companies also to be successful, the collaboration needs to be there. So companies need to collab. So you're talking about intra-company collaboration, right? So intra-company collaboration is needed to make that company successful. And inter-company collaboration, I think someone referred to inter-company collaboration as well in the earlier speeches. That is needed to make sure there's no vicious, vicious cycle of value chain break. So both would be essential. But absolutely, in order to be Indian companies to be successful and compete in the global market, this collaboration is extremely important. Uh, hi, Panchali. Uh, the question is like, uh, you know, the R console is something else with the data analytics part. Uh, okay, like after I get the data, what will I do? You spoke about that. But the concern is like, how will I measure? And how will I capture the data and then analyze it? So measurement and also do you recommend, because I'm from the end user um, industry, like from real estate firm, Infinity. Okay. So we have huge chunk of data. Maybe, I don't know, historic data, we are unable to collect it, but maybe we have now the current data, but what? So do you recommend like we should have an in-house team who will work on that? Or do you recommend, do we outsource it to a uh, to an agency who works on data analytics? So what is your recommendation? Like we are perplexed, like what we will do with the data because we don't have data scientists working with us. So do you recommend us to hire those kind of people who will work on this? Or or, or like for example, we, we, we put so much, or we spend so much on holdings and on how to measure that. Uh, how we can measure the data also. So that's a concern also. Okay, uh, so uh, that, that's a very good question. Uh, so one of the things, the principles of outsourcing uh, say that you, know, you do what your core competency is and you outsource the others. Having said that, uh, yes, definitely, you know, there are, this is a world of specialization. So you have specialists out there who, who are good at collecting data and analyzing data. So you definitely need some degree of outsourcing where you need the specialist to come in. But having said that, you know your business the best. 
So the outsourcing company will not know your business, even if they have experience in real estate. They will not know the, the, the nitty gritties of your specific company as well as a member of your organization would be. So if you just outsource and forget about it, that initiative will not be successful. You would need involvement. Now whether you need a data science person or a business person to be involved with it, that is completely an organizational decision, but the involvement needs to be there.